Yep. Got a bit of a problem, but I do have a solution. In the background, you're hearing uh, Melissa doing chiming work. It's uh, the parts of the vibrato. Uh, um, uh, I uh, hit it with uh, a small plastic thing, which is uh, really a flute rod, cleaning rod. And uh, well, that's basically what that, that music is. Let me get my glasses. Now, Christina is having problems with her um, the bridge saddles, and if you look closely, you see that. It's not really, the radius is not captured. Uh, the frets, you know, I wanna uh, go with that curvature. And uh, the high E will, will not lower. Also the A and the low, well the low B will lower, uh, low E. But the, uh, the A string wound will not lower because of uh, one of the screws. So I took these bridge saddles. Let me get behind the camera so I can show you. These are from Melissa, the one that's doing the chiming in the background. They're, they look pretty good. So I'm gonna put them on Christina. I won't bore you with all the details as to uh, how I have to do it because it takes a bit of time but I can uh, show you these, what I'm gonna install. These are still good, and that's from uh, Melissa's uh, bridge. Uh, I showed you that on one of the videos. Uh, I mark them, you know, Melissa, so I know uh, which, uh, who, what guitar it goes to, the vibrato uh, bridge setup. So, um, let me get that, uh... uh I, I keep all these parts. This is from Allison. It's a cover. To have a PRS thing. Um, anyway, those covers, I keep all the parts. This, this is actually PRS. Uh, um, this is the vibrato from Melissa. a few out. Two of them there I, sh I showed you. Um, and this is one that I put back in here, but it's from Christina. And this one, uh, that screw is, is, is stuck, like ah, frozen, corroded. Who knows what all is holding that, but I cannot turn it. I even used the hemostats on it. Uh, to turn them, turn that screw. You can see that Melissa has been with me 15 years, so this uh, particular saddle, the yeah, chrome, basically, since I put my palm back there for a lot of stuff, uh, my skin acids, I guess, <laughs> took a toll on it. And, uh, While I'm at it, uh, this is the pickup that went inert. It was on Melissa. It's a carbon. Uh, it's a 22 pole, 11 per coil. And um, you can tell it's a carbon 22. 
neck. And um, that's that on that. I even keep I keep the old um, tuners. I keep everything. That way, um, oh, this is a, a pretty neat little pickup. It's very trebly, and it's El Nico. It's called Rare Vintage. Uh, I put it on Melissa. I bought this for a lead pickup, and I like a thick tone, uh, full tone. It has a Telecaster tone. It's uh, voiced that way. And I don't care for Telecasters. Too thin of a sound, although it was very powerful, but it just kind of poked your eardrums with the amount of treble. So I was not very happy with it, and uh, I bought uh, a Chinese El Nico, and I put it on, and that one did good. It um, chirped very well. Uh, also helped uh, create a, a tweener sound. That was before I uh, took the Seymour Duncan that I, because this pickup went inert. I had to do something. And uh, it does not put out at all, nothing, no voltage. So, uh, that was the neck pickup. And uh, instead, I said, well, I still have, after a year, I said, well, I still have that uh, Seymour Duncan. So that's when I slid the pickup from uh, the bridge position to the neck position and rewired it uh, on parallel. And I liked the sound of it. And I wrote a song on it, uh, Raw Woodshed is the theme song. And uh, it came out so nice. Uh, the tone is unusual for a neck pickup, you know. Because uh, if you put a humbucker, that same lead humbucker, it'll be way too much bass and uh, it will not be clear and clean. So uh, I use that. Um, Seymour Duncan, it's uh, wired in parallel and uh, the screwables placed in the position that I like. Uh, I got a focused, very good uh, uh, rhythm uh, sound to it. And you can lead with it. It has, uh, because it's a uh, single coil, two of them, uh, it sounds, uh, you know, like strats have more detail in the high end. And that's what that is. Um, another tip that I have is, um, I'm not sure if you guys with vibratos have uh, problems with uh, the springs um, putting out unwanted harmonics, unwanted uh, metal-like sounds, but uh, I have this on all my guitars. It's just basically felt. Um, let me see if I can get a little more light here. A little more light. Maybe, uh, that felt allows the springs to move and you know do whatever it needs to do, but it dampens that unwanted uh, metallic sound. Uh, it's a, un, you know, I mean, I'm doing ringing stuff here with Melissa, but that's wanted. I'm basically doing percussion on uh, different parts of the body. I hit it on the binding, I hit it different places, and it's a, it's a chambered guitar, so it resonates very well. Uh, that's in the background music. So, I'll be putting these two, these two be, will be going on Christina. Uh, my, uh, it's, that is a, a Kramer Focus. They started out by making um, aluminum neck guitars and basses. Uh, the, 
basses caught on. They had a good, solid uh, bottom to them. And, uh, very punchy, and bass players liked it. Uh, so they bought them. Uh, but the guitars never caught on. It just uh, aluminum necks on a guitar didn't quite make it. So there's, a, there's been a few other guitars that use aluminum necks, but uh, uh, I particularly did not like it, so I uh, sold the guitar. Uh, I did buy one, just curious, but I did not like how metallic it sounded. So, anyway, I won't bore you with the uh, um, uh, all the work that I have to do, but this is the way it goes with some guitars, uh, especially the ones that have been around for a while. Christina was around, it was un unwanted. Uh, nobody was buying it, and the price was $99. And it was six and nine, I switched to, and did the work on this, <coughs> the headstock. I turned it into Ernie Ball type. It's not exactly right. I mean, as for Ernie Ball, Ernie Ball is round up here, kind of a squirrel. This one, I said, well, the quickest way to this side to put those two tuners here is to cut 90 exact 90 degrees right across. Then I started to have to make curves on it so that it would work. You know, it would look good, and I put the tuners on. Uh, those, those are uh, Ernie Ball tuners. So both guitars, my Ernie Ball, uh, the one I call uh, uh, Dirty Blonde, <laughs> Melissa, she has these tuners too. And I believe that they're Schallers. Uh, Schaller is a, a German company and these are German uh, tuners. They're locking tuners. And that's about all I can say right now. Uh, I'll be back uh, and show the, the you know the work that I've done, uh, including the the radius will be right. Uh, thank you for uh, watching and listening. God bless.